Section 9.3, example 3. A company produces bags of rice that are labeled as containing five pounds of rice. So that sounds kind of like a claim value, right? They claim it's five pounds. The company routinely performs hypothesis tests on its own product to detect if its filling machine is malfunctioning. So a recent sample of 12 bags of rice included the following weights in pounds. And then um, we'll use the data in a second, but let's comment on the requirements first. So because my sample size is only 12, it's way less than 30 and it's way less than 15, I'm gonna um, use the norm test way back in 6.5. So the norm test um, from 6.5 told me that if the p-value, it was actually a hypothesis test before we knew about them, was greater than 0.5, then normal is reasonable. Otherwise, if it's less than 0.5, it's definitely not normal. So I put this data into StatCrunch and I got a p-value of 0.5502. So since my sample size is only 12, right, less than 15, we need the population to be normal. Since we can't check that out, we can at least use the norm test to check if it's reasonable. So the norm test gave a p-value of 5502, which is more than 05. So it's reasonable to assume that the population is normal and the requirements have been met. So let's go ahead and find our hypothesis test and then we'll find, um, we'll put the data in the calculator. So we're gonna find the hypothesis and alpha. So perform a hypothesis test at 5%, so alpha is 0.05, to determine if the filling machine on average, so we're in mean land, is filling the bags with the incorrect amount. So the correct amount would be five, incorrect would be anything not five. Too big, the company's losing money, too small, customers are upset. All right, so then before we can find the test statistic, we need to enter the data into L1 to find X bar and S, since that wasn't given. So let's go to L1. So stat edit. If you have data, make sure you clear it and we'll enter the data into L1. So I'm gonna type it really fast. If you need a lot of time, go ahead and pause while you enter the data. Just type everything into L1 and we'll check for typos as well. All right, so we'll go to stat, we'll go to one var stat, L1. I haven't done this in a while. And we get all the information. Um, remember that sum of x squared is just to check for typos. So yeah, that matches. So my x bar is 5.0525 and s is 0.13451. You can see those on there. All right, and our sample size is 12. So let's go ahead and find the t-score. Since we're in mean land, we're using the t-score. So t is x bar minus mu zero over s over root n. So x bar is my sample of 5.025 minus the claim of five. So I don't think we're gonna reject, right? 5.05 doesn't feel that big compared to five, but we'll still measure the risk. And then we will take S, 0.13451 over square root of 12. Um, so make sure you add those parentheses and then we'll find a T-score. So parentheses around the top divided by parentheses around the bottom. And we should get a T-score of 1.352. So again, probably not rejecting. It's probably just random because we're within those two standard deviations. But let's find the p-value. So we're doing a not equal, so we're gonna look at both sides. So 1.352, negative 1.352. And so we'll just double the p-value. So we only have to do TCDF once. 
So 2 CDF, T CDF. Um, I'm looking at the right side, 1.352 up to infinity. And then degrees of freedom will be n minus 1, so it'll be 11, because n is 12. And make sure you remember to double it. I usually just do TCDF and double after. Just make sure you remember. So you'll do lower upper degrees of freedom and then times two once you have a result. And we get 0 0.2035. So this is too risky. If the bags are filling correctly, it, there's like a 20% chance this would randomly happen. So that's too risky. It's greater than our cutoff of 05. So we're not going to reject. So there is not enough evidence. There's weak evidence. At 5% to show that the filling machine is filling incorrectly on average. It might be incorrect for an individual bag, right? We could see some of the bags are clearly not five pounds exactly, but we wanted the average to at least be five. So there's not enough evidence to show the filling machine is incorrect on average. So I think we'll do one more confidence interval and compare just to get more practice with that. So let me just copy N was 12. X bar was 5.0525, and S was 0.13451. So this time we'll create a 95% confidence interval to show the true average amount of rice for all the bags. So we're in mean land. So we'll use the formula X bar plus or minus T times S over root N. So let's go ahead and put 95% in the middle for a 95% confidence interval. So that means we have 5% left over, so 0 0.025 when I cut that in half, each tail has to split it. And degrees of freedom will be 11 and minus one. So we'll go to the 025 column and the 11 row to find the T-score. So 025 is the third one. We go down to 11, and I get 2.201. And that's my T-score. All right, so go ahead and plug into the formula. Maybe you're feeling like you can do it without me. Pause the video and just plug in, and we can check answers together. We've been doing confidence intervals for a while now. So for the plus or minus piece, pause if you haven't gotten there yet, right? I'm telling you to pause and do this at your own pace. I got 0 0.0855. So I really encourage you to try some on your own. I think it's really good for you. Oops, I'm making major typos. Point zero eight five five. I'm trying to make decimal places match, which is why I went up to out to four, and then we'll just subtract. I like to subtract first, and we're in mean land, so mu is in the interval, four point nine six seven up to five point one three eight. So we're confident. We don't know the actual average, but we know the average is somewhere in between four point nine six seven and 5.138. So any number in between here is a reasonable possibility. So how does this agree with our hypothesis? So we did not reject that the mean could be five. Did not reject. And that agrees, right? Our interval tells us that five is still possible because it's within the interval. So it agrees. We don't know that mu is equal to 5, but 5 is still a reasonable possibility. Mu could be 5 if mu is in the interval 
4.967 to 5.138. So we don't have enough evidence to prove it's not five, basically.